Tiny and, and, and the recipes will also be available um, on Southern Spice Rack. And uh, so you can go there and get the recipes after today. But let's get started. It's game day with Landa. I promise you all ready. Woo! Listen, you guys, thank you so much for allowing me to come into my kitchen and share with you a few recipes for game day. My name is Tisha Johnson, and I am the owner of Orleans Bistro, located in South Point, um, Massaponics area. I am also the owner of Southern Spice Rack, which is my online seasoning um, company that I am launching this week. So a lot of the recipes, the recipes we're preparing today and a lot of other recipes you will be able to find on southernspicerack.com. So let's get started. I'm going to tell you guys what I've got planned for, for you today. We're going to be making garlic parmesan wings. They are my favorite wings. Um, and we are going to also be making a spicy vegan cauliflower. And I did that uh, by request because some people don't eat meat. So I want to give them a very chicken-like option. A lot of times you'll see vegan people eating the fried cauliflower. And so I put a, a little twist on it. So I made it a spicy cauliflower and it is absolutely delicious. I've been eating it all week. I'm not giving up chicken though, but, <laughs> but I like that as well. Um, something else that we're going to be doing today, you guys, is we're going to be playing a little game. Okay, um, I always love to do fun facts and myths and is it, is it true, is it, you know, a saying, you know, I always like to keep it kind of fun when I'm cooking and, um, and when I do these types of cooking shows, so I wanted to start off by um, giving you guys a hidden little secret that I do. So at home, a lot of times I do not buy butter. Um, I make it. And where did that come from making your own butter? And people would always say to me, Tish, why do you do that? So, you know, isn't it time consuming? And doesn't it take a lot of time? Actually, it doesn't. It's very easy. It takes you about 30 minutes and I'm going to make some butter while we're cooking this other stuff, just to show you at home just how easy it is. To so before we get started, we're going to get our butter started. So, fun fact for Black History Month is um, back in slavery time, um, a lot of that butter was not something that the slaves had easy access to, right? So, that was something that was normally prepared and it was used for, their, for the slave owners in their homes, you know, because butter makes things taste really good. So, I was like, well, they had to make butter? How did they make it? They made it and they churned it by hand. I was like, okay, we're not doing it today. We're going to do the cheap way because I got a kitchen egg. So what, what butter is, is it's very simple. It is heavy whipping cream. Okay. So right here, I have one quart of heavy whipping cream. Right. So what I'm going to do is I am going to pour an entire quart of heavy whipping cream into my kitchen aid. Okay. This is just a little trick. You guys can do this later. You guys can do this another time. You guys can start doing this on a regular rate. It's totally up to you. One other thing you're going to learn about me is that I do not really measure things. I just sort of season until the ancestors tell me to stop. <laughs> so that's how I cook. So I love pink Himalayan salt. So that's what I use. So you take, um, I'm going to say roughly about mm, a teaspoon of salt. You add that to your heavy whipping cream. And you turn on your kitchen egg. That's it. Butter is being made. In about 30 minutes, We'll have butter. We'll roll it up in some parchment paper. And I'll have um, about a half a cup of butter, which is equivalent to about a stick. Um, and then I'll stick it in the fridge. And that's how I have fresh butter. Real simple. Awesome. So I just wanted to share that little fun fact with you guys to let you know. 
that you too can make butter at home. You don't always have to buy it. You can make it. Um, so the first thing we're going to be cooking is <clears throat> the garlic parmesan wings. So I want to make sure everybody's got everything. So I, I said you should probably have about 12 wings. You're going to need some olive oil. You're going to need some salt, garlic powder, and black pepper. Okay? So what I've done is I've got my yummy wings already in here, cleaned and ready to go. And I'm going to go ahead and season it. <clears throat> so I'm going to start with my garlic powder, my black pepper, my salt, and my olive oil, okay? And like I told you, I season a little differently because I don't use measurements, but I will tell you roughly how much I'm using of everything. The first thing is I'm gonna go ahead and get my wings with about mm, two tablespoons of olive oil because they're gonna go into the oven. I'm gonna go ahead and use roughly about three, four tablespoons of salt. I'm going to use about mm, a tablespoon of garlic powder and about a fourth tablespoon of black pepper. I have these really cute little cheap bowls I use um, just because they're easy. They have lids to them. Where do I get them at? I order it off Amazon. <laughs> so then you put them in your little cheap bowl. And you shake, 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 shake. And you mix, 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 mix. You get them nice and coated. Hey, Tish, how much garlic powder did you say? I'm sorry? How much garlic powder did you say? I said I use about a tablespoon and a half. I like the garlic powder. So I like the garlicky flavor of the wings. About a tablespoon and a half. And then you want to uh, want to make sure you get them mixed in really good. And then the butter's looking really good, by the way. Okay. And then your wings should be very well coated. They'll look something like this. Okay. So they're sitting in like a little bit of um, the olive oil and the seasonings and all that good stuff. And then what I do is I just take them. You don't have to grease your pan because the olive oil is plenty. And I put them on my cookie sheet. I lay them out. I got some pretty big wings. So yum, yum, yum. Lay them on my cookie sheet. Now, oven should be preheated at 375. Okay? Oven should be preheated at 375. So it typically takes about, depending on your oven, five or six minutes. I cheat it. Mine are, mine's already preheated. And then what you want to basically do is put your wings in. It'll take your wings about 45 minutes to cook. You want to slide those guys in your oven. And about every 15 minutes or so, you want to flip them on each side. Okay? Um, this way, they'll get nice and coated. and um, They'll cook more evenly if you flip them throughout the, the process. And at that point, this is kind of letting your, your wings do their thing and get ready. Okay? So we will come back to our wings. But I have a, I have another fun fact question. So we're going to be doing a little um little Q and A, some myths, and we're going to be debunking some stuff. Okay, and uh, if you get the answer right, you win a prize because I'm all about prizes and making it fun. So my first question is, where did chicken and waffles come? Whoever wants to go, and while you're thinking about it, you don't Google word. it either. Don't Google it. Where did chicken and waffles originally come from? 
Georgia? I mean, talking to state? No. <laughs> Africa. Louisiana. And the winner will win a meal prep set. So this is a <laughs> this is a Dura glass meal prep set. It Louisiana. comes in five color coded individual containers so that you can meal prep your food in advance. So who's who's gonna shoot this? Chicken and waffles. Where did it come from? Somebody said the South or Georgia. I said Louisiana. This Louisiana. Mm -mm. Chicken and waffles. Okay. Okay. It do sound sound awkward, but if I'm not mistaken, and I heard before they said something about some Virginia did something. I don't know how we got anything, but they said that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let me help you guys out. It did not come from the United States. Africa. Is it Africa? No. Nope. There ain't no nothing about chicken and walk. London. It had to be London. London. The Chinese Indian. people. China. China. They got everything. India? <laughs> everything before us. Right. <laughs> India? I just said it. Chicken and waffles. I don't know where the waffles came from. I don't know. You know that I got Germany. Germany. Okay. <laughs> let, 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 let's break it down. Where okay. Where do we where did the waffle part of chicken and waffles come from? Someone answered it first and she got it right. It's Belgian, right? So Belgian. Mm -hmm. No, because yeah. of Belgian waffle. That was cute. Germany. <laughs> Belgian. It's Germany. <laughs> Chicken part of chicken and waffles. Somebody said it in the beginning. Africa. Uh uh. Germany. Oh. Louisiana. One of the first ones. It was in the state. In the state, Georgia. Georgia. Georgia, the South. Right. Okay. Who said the South? Oh, I said. All oh, right. Yeah. Here, get her name. Who was that? Darlene. Georgia. Oh, Darlene. Okay. Got it. Okay. So the prize is gone. Here you go. Now let me give y'all a little history of chicken and waffles. It is a European thing. And they did not start it off with waffles. Um, it was not a sweet dish. They used cream chicken and a waffle, but it was not a, they didn't use syrup and they didn't use fried chicken. So it originated in Europe. And when it got to the South, then the Southerners made it fried chicken and waffles. But the, but the original origin place was Europe. They came up with the cream chicken and waffles. I didn't even know that. I had to do a little research myself, guys. So we did not create it. It wasn't even an African-American thing. Now, when we put our twist on it, making it fried chicken and waffles with syrup and making it sweet, then that's when it became a southern thing. So the Europeans brought it over. Okay. And we just mastered it and changed it and made it to our liking. And that's how we got introduced to fried chicken and waffles. That's so. crazy. So yay, great fun fact. Because everybody <laughs> thinks that it originated in the South and it originated, oh, look at this. Nope, nope, nope. Okay, I got another question. So everybody wings should be in the oven cooking. Getting ready, getting ready. Okay. After this question, we're gonna start on our vegan icy powder. I have one of them high tech. Uh, I have one of them hot tish. I have one of them high tech ovens. They get themselves together in a moment. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm gonna need one of them. I'm gonna need one of them. Okay, so I have a question for y'all. This is gonna probably be a little debate, but is cornbread supposed to be sweet? Original. No. I like it sweet. Yes. Does that count? Has cornbread, is cornbread supposed to be sweet? No. I say yes. Who no. said no? No. no. I said no. No. It's supposed to be buttery. Right. Okay. <laughs> and buttery. Who else said no? Who else said no? 
I said no. no. I said yes. I said yes. You said yes. I think Lynn, did you say no too? Yes, I said no. Okay. All right. This next question is prize worthy. <laughs> and the prize is. I love this. I love this. I love this. I use it in my kitchen all the time. It is a kitchen scale. Okay. Now remember, remember who's winning what prizes because you guys swing by the bistro and pick up y'all prizes anytime after five o'clock today. So kitchen scale. This is the second part of the cornbread question. Is it supposed to be yellow? Original. White. 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 I, I said white. I said white. Okay. <laughs> I mean, let me tell you, she gonna win all the prizes because she be in the kitchen cooking. Y'all gonna have to listen. Y'all gonna have to step it up. She is winning everything. Same woman won the prize. So history of cornbread. Cornbread was not sweet originally when the slave when it was created by slaves, it was a form of bread that they ate, and it was white, and it was hard and very bitter. Um, yes, they used butter on it. Um, they skimmed the fat off of the milk, and that was technically what we call today heavy whipping cream, mm. and then they would churn and make their own butter, and they would use white meal, yellow cornmeal came into play many years later and people started to add sugar to it and all of these other ingredients but it really was just the cornmeal the white meal that they would use and the heavy whipping cream that they would get fresh from when, from the um cows the when they would milk them the fat that would go on top of the milk that they would skim off is what they used to make their butter mm. so it was always unsweet. It was a thicker, dense type cornbread, and it was white. It was never meant to be yellow. Now, at the bistro, okay, my cornbread is yellow because most people don't, um, they prefer more of a cake type cornbread than real cornbread. Mm -hmm. Now, when I'm at home, I use Martha White cornmeal mix. And I make buttermilk cornbread in my cast iron skillet because I don't like to eat cornbread at all. Mm -hmm. So I don't even eat the cornbread that I make at my restaurant because I don't like cake cornbread. I like the good old fashioned stuff. So fun cornbread fact. Y'all gonna have to start cooking because like I said, that lady, she gonna answer all the questions. She gonna win all the prizes and I got to come and two prizes over here. I'm just telling y'all, well, you, you, you gotta start cooking. You gotta start cooking. She answering them quick. She is I'm, not playing. Okay. Mama and Brandon raised me to how to su to survive. They ain't made me no shit. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay, so we got our wings in the oven and they are doing what they do. Now what we need to do is we need to get our cauliflower and everything ready for our vegan spicy cauliflower. I can literally eat this thing all day. Oh, it's so delicious. Okay. So does everybody have their cauliflower and have to cut it up yet? Yes. No. No. No? Okay. So I knew it. if you are actually making Sorry, Walter. cauliflower, what you want to do is you want to cut your cauliflower up and break it up into pieces. Doesn't have to be a certain size. I've got all size pieces of cauliflower in this bowl. So that's the first thing. So if you have not cut up your cauliflower, you want to cut it off and you want to cut it into pieces. Stacy, my wings in the oven now. Mine's in there now too. I caught that. Both of us did the same thing. Don't feel bad. That that hot that oven just. I put it in there while it was still preheating. I said, it's ready, Amanda. It's ready. She was taking the time. I don't understand it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So take your time. Shut up your cauliflower. I'm not gonna rush you. Well, thank you, Jesus. Yes. Basic crisp. Bits and pieces like this. Bits and pieces of these cauliflower. What'd you say? Bits and pieces like this. Uh -huh. Walter, where your cauliflower at? Walter. It's cut up. I saw it. 
He revealed his prize. See, look, mm -hmm. I'm jealous. He didn't cut that. He did not cut that up. Oh, trust him. <laughs> he did not cut that up. I promise you that. <laughs> yum, yum, yum. So you want to do that first. He's basically mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Was I the only one that didn't cut mine up? Out there somewhere. I was, I was like, mm -mm. I don't want to do nothing wrong, so I'm not going to cut it. Oh, no, you just cut it in pieces. You are perfectly fine. Ready? Yep. And once you get it cut into pieces, Man. we want to make our marinade. <clears throat> so our marinade is going to be <clears throat> one cup of the unsweetened almond milk. Oh, that's okay. Now, one would say to me, Tish, do you have to use almond milk? Yes, because we're making it vegan. If we weren't making it vegan, you would not have to use almond milk, we could use regular milk, but we're making it vegan, so that's why it's requiring that we use almond milk. The, um, the next thing you want to put in there is a couple tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. Okay, when you say couple, two, three, two, two, two. two tablespoons. Mm -hmm. And then you want to put in there A half a cup of your cayenne pepper sauce. I want you to know that I was really looking for that in the store, too. Okay, so it's basically half a cup. I use great. I like my stuff extra spicy. So I use great, red hot, mm. extra hot. I found, I, like, I like a spicy kitchen. I found it too. You found it? But I was so standing in the aisle like, like this. I was just standing in the aisle looking like, huh? It's a world. Right. And it's right there in front of you. Right there in front of you. Oh, is that happening? Some people like Texas Peak. Some people like um, Crystal, Louisiana. I'm from Ohio. We grew up on Franks, and I just, oh. It's just my palate. I need Frank when I want to do this. How much uh, cayenne sauce? Half. Half a cup of cayenne pepper sauce. Uh, Tish. Yes. Did you say olive oil too? Or did you? I, mean, I was in that rattling pan. No, no, no. For the, so for the vegan spicy cauliflower, you're going to use one cup of unsweetened almond milk. Got you're going to use about two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. That's and a mix. half a cup of your favorite hot sauce. Gotcha. That's, what we got. That's gotcha. your marinade. There we okay? go. Okay. You're going to mix that up. How much apple cider vinegar? How much apple cider vinegar? Two tablespoons. Two tablespoons. Two tablespoons. I really just go. I'm like, I'm like, um, just, just pour the stuff in there. <laughs> that look about right. Yeah, that look about right. <laughs> that look about right. They look about right. That's good to go. Yes. So what I do is I'm going to put it into a little bowl, and then I'm going to pour this marinade right over the cauliflower. We had his milk. Oh, we had milk a bit. Ooh, that smells good and hot. Mm. So y'all, this, this one. Mm -hmm. Just mixing it. Yep. Wait a minute, see, I need an assistant. Assistant, can I get some help? I know, I'm right. worried about everybody else. She's like, you know, yeah. you know. See that, see, I can't prepare. I got four assistants. How about that? You need to teach. You don't, you don't yeah. sleep on. Don't never sleep on walk. <laughs> I got four assistants. Mm -hmm. You came Butter. prepared and ready. I don't know what I was thinking. I just thought I was super one. Oh, he made a song. My assistant is waiting for the food to be done. I know, right? 
your sister like, where is it? Where is it? Right. So, yeah. So I just let the cauliflower, um, um, when you, if, if you go to my website, Southern Spice Rack, it's going to tell you to let it marinate for 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. You can let it marinate for as long, you know, as long as you want. You can let it marinate an hour or whatever. I've made this instantly, and I've made it where I've let it marinate. Either way, it's just delicious. It's just a yummy, spicy, just little bite of party in your mouth. I mean, it's like, oh, I love it. So we got that over there, and we got our cauliflower sitting in our marinade mixture, mm-hmm. which is our wet rub. Now we're going to do our dry rub. That's cornstarch. Okay. So in our dry rub, it calls for yes, two yes. tablespoons of cornstarch. Everybody got their dry rub ingredients? Yeah. There's always one, it's me. I'm still shaking my other bowl. Make sure it's mixed up. Good. Oh, still shake. Okay. Keep your marinade going. Keep your marinade going. These garlic ones. No. How often do we need to turn those over? You said. I don't know. I, that's what I was doing. I was just returning mine. I'm like, ah. That's it. Ain't touching my little bit. That's it, Stacey. Ain't touching my little bit. Say, what's that next ingredient? Um, two cups of all perfect flour. Turn your wings. Don't forget to turn your wings every now and then. We gotta turn our wings. Turn the wings. We put out next. Turn the wings. I'm gonna um wish this out real quick. Let you guys get a little peek. That's my wings. So right now they're looking like that. You know, they don't look like they got a lot of brown. Yeah. But they're cooking. They're cooking. Can they smell yummy? So we've got our cauliflower marinating. Now, while your cauliflower is marinating, you want to go ahead and put your vegetable oil, your canola oil, or peanut oil, whatever you prefer to fry in. You want to go ahead and you want to get that on the stove and you want to get that up to temp. You got to get up to temp. Okay. You want to go ahead and get your oil on the stove. You want to make sure that it's getting hot so that once we get ready to do this dry batter, we can go ahead and we can take our cauliflower from wet to dry, wet to dry, and then from Check it on the batter. Looking yummy. Let's that to that I got to see me the way I move just much when I cook every day. I'm not ready to quit. <laughs> you gotta love it. Another fun fact. Fries for this fun fact is one of my favorite kitchen tools. So I told you guys I love garlic parmesan wings. They're like one of my favorites. So um, it is so yummy when you use fresh garlic. So this is called a garlic zoom. It's a garlic chopper. Okay. And let me show you mine. Thank you. So basically what you do is you pop open this little guy and you stick whole pieces of garlic in there. Once you stick the garlic in there, you close it up and it's got wheels on it and you roll it across your counter and it mixes your fresh garlic for you. That's neat. So it is like a super nifty little kitchen tool if you like to use fresh garlic and you simply just add it, close it, roll it, and you end up with fresh fresh mint garlic and it smells so good and it tastes so good when you use fresh garlic so that's the that's the product the question is in what year was the word soul food first put into print oh god into print in what year was the word soul food first put into print First put into print. Mm-hmm. First year. 
First, she had put into print. Put into print. Oh, no. Hey, that's Let's go there. Yeah. Hola. No, you've been what year? 1960. 1964. Oh, 1962. I thought it was 64. 1964. Is it? Okay. Oh, well. Come on. Okay. So let me tell you. 64. 1964 is the first. You're going to get yeah. the dollar thing. Um, time mm -hmm. that the term was used in print. In print. And it was during the rise of black pride. Yep. Many aspects of the African American culture, including soul music were celebrated for their contribution to the American way of life. So um, that was the first time where it was actually put out there that soul food was a thing. It was always a hidden thing, but it was never really official until they started putting it in print. So you would see it um, in people that were opening restaurants and you would, you would then see it become a big thing. But 1964 was the first year. I was looking for the actual print of um, what it was printed in, and I couldn't find it. So I'll keep looking because now I'm curious to see what, what what did they use it in that first print. But it was when they started integrating um, a lot of African American culture and making it a part of the American way as well. So that was pretty interesting to me. 1964. That wasn't too long ago. So food hadn't been around, you know, that. It had been around forever, but it had never been like I guess Don't well go. known, well around facts. I mean, it wasn't like in papers and dictionaries. It was just kind of under the table, hush hush, until 1964. I'm like, you know how long we've been eating soul food? Okay, <laughs> that was the first time everybody found out about it. Now everybody loves it. Right. And what they said, everybody loves it. Everybody loves it. Everybody. 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 Um, remember your prizes because when you come to the bistro, you just come in to pick up your prizes. And I don't remember. Okay. Oh, I remember. I remember. I'm going to give me, I'm gonna give me some, some chicken wings. Stacey, what are you shaking? What you doing, Stacey? What's that? Get my stuff up now because I don't want to be behind. Oh, I'm, well, I'm already coming. Ah. I'm looking at you. Like, what you doing? Oh, we ahead. Oh, we ahead. Oh, we just having a little bit of fun. Doing yeah, fun. Okay. I already know. I got to pay attention. I got to have my dry mix ready so I can watch you. That's the only way I'm going to learn. We ready. Y'all ready. See? We ready. So I'm not the only one. <laughs> I'm going off of your instructions. I ain't even paying attention to the game. I can't even lie. <laughs> Girls, just yell out answers and guess. Just yell out answers and guess. <laughs> Okay, so now we're gonna do our dry mixture. Like I told you guys, I don't do uh, at home. I don't use a lot of measuring utensils. So I'm gonna tell y'all what it should be. You can measure, but I just like the eyeball. Mm -hmm. That's the way I like to cook. So, um, first thing in our dry mixture, we want to put two tablespoons of cornstarch. Okay. You want to put in your dry mix two cups of all purpose flour. Oh, so we missed it. Oh, we already did it. One tablespoon of brown sugar. Yeah, we did it already. We did that already. Yeah, we good. So I'm gonna go back. We're doing two tablespoons of cornstarch, two cups of all-purpose flour. We're using one tablespoon of brown sugar. Okay. We're gonna use one teaspoon of black pepper. We're going to use one teaspoon of paprika. I had to make sure because if it was cayenne pepper, it was going to kill me. We want to use three teaspoons of cayenne pepper. Now, if you don't like spices, tail that back, 
So one spoon. Oh, so one spoon. So see, maybe if of... you don't like it, two spices. So Tish, I'll put, yeah, I'll scale it back to one. But keep in mind, your wet mixture also has cayenne softening. Yeah, yeah she's trying to set us on fire. You then want to use one teaspoon of garlic. And you want to use one teaspoon of onion powder. Oh, yeah, we did all that. We did all that. Yeah, we good to go. Last mm -hmm. but not least, you want to put a half a teaspoon of salt. Okay. Your dry mixture is complete. And you want to just take a little whisk and mix it up nice and well. How's my butter churning? Oh, it looks fabulous. Butter's doing great. So yeah, so you want to go ahead and mix up your your flour. Get it nice and mixed. Okay. So you'll have a bowl for your dry mix. You will have your cauliflower that you have marinating. What I would like for you to do is I'd like for you to take out those cauliflower pieces and place them in a separate bowl and save the marinade. Okay. Ooh, the oh, liquid no. marinade. All you're doing is you're just taking the cauliflower out of the marinade now that it's been sitting in, and you're going to move it just to a different dish, and you're going to save the liquid marinade that was in, it. and we had it sitting in. It. So she said we're going to move. Move the cauliflower in. Yeah, and we're cooking. Yeah. Take the yum out the bowl. Cauliflower out the bowl, right? Cauliflower is now in a bowl. It it should have a nice red tint okay. to it. Um, and then you have your liquid which is separate. Yeah. So you got it three bowls there. Right. I keep right. turning around because I keep flipping my wings. Oh, okay. You oh don't run. Oh, yeah. oh Lord! Can I get an assistant? <laughs> Because <laughs> you want to keep flipping them so that they cook evenly. Hey, so you need somebody to come flip it. Yes, ain't nobody budged. I got two other people in the house. Ain't nobody moved. They was like, you want to do this. No. <laughs> They'll be ready for you when they be ready for you when the um when the wings are uh mm. when the wings Whoa. are done. Lord, I don't got left the oil on the stove on high. Jesus. No, hope the pop no. Lord, I hope the fire department don't come. Jesus. <laughs> Lord, the book long gonna go on. I think she's good now. She all right. Now. I took it off. You took it off. You took it off. My Please. sisters, they back here fanning with the fans and stuff. They <laughs> <all right>. Nope. <laughs> Somebody no. come save me. Lord, go get the book. I got fly all over. I'm gonna go. All right. Mm -hmm. Butter. Butter. Oh. You got a real cooking that should get a little fly on me. That's what it is. Yeah, that's what we're going to tell ourselves. I'm going to get the pinning with you. That's the flower. Okay. 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 I mean, the liquid mixture should be now empty. All the cauliflower should have been moved to its own separate bowl. And then you should have your dry mixture in a third bowl. Okay. So right now we're operating with three bowls because we're about to go to the oil that you should have heated on your stove. Yeah, she okay, your oil not ready for time. She ready. She I got to come out my sweatshirt. Hold up. Mm. So, hey, 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 
Yeah. Tish, how much yes. oil do you how much oil you put in your pan? Do you put enough to cover the I put enough in there to, to almost cover. And I'm actually about to move the camera. We're about to go over to my stove so you guys can see. I have enough in there to almost cover the cauliflower pieces when I put them in there. You are not pan frying them, you are deep frying the cauliflower. Yeah, you definitely. You want to make sure that you have enough oil in there so that it pretty much covers about 85% of your cauliflower. Okay. Now, I'm going to give everybody a couple minutes to get everything situated, but I'll tell you this. So I take over to my stove the cauliflower, right? And that goes furthest away from my frying pan. And then next, I take over my liquid and my dry. So it goes. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you how it's actually done. So I've got my cauliflower. I've got my cauliflower here. Uh -huh. I've got my liquid here. Uh -huh. And then I have my dry mix here. And my oil in the, on the stove, let me just kind of tip that in for you to see. I just got a saucepan, but it, it's enough oil in there where it will cover my cauliflower. Oh. Okay. Just enough oil to cover the cauliflower. Right. Hey, so you got yours on the stove? Over there, buy it. Everything ready. I got to pay attention because I turn up. Oh, you so is everybody ready to fry? Oh yeah, we ready. We ready. Right. Yeah, my we ready. ready. We ready. So what you want to do is you want to take your cauliflower, mm -hmm. you dip it back into the wet marinade, okay? Okay. okay. So I take my cauliflower, I dip it into the wet marinade, uh -huh. then I put it into the dry, coat it very well in the dry. Then we're going to take it to the pan, right? Then I take my cauliflower and I put it back inside of the wet marinade. Oh. And then I put it back into the dry. Oh. So she does. She does. She double coat. You're double coating. Yep. There you go. I know this. We making cauliflower fried chicken, y'all. Yep. There you have it. It's a party in your mouth. It's a party in your mouth. Well, I can't you wait to try it. I'm going to try it. You then want to drop your cauliflower into your oil very gently. I don't want you to, you know, splatter and burn yourself. And Thank you're going to repeat that process. So we are going to do a wet. Okay, my assistant, she can be dry. <laughs> wet to dry. Back she to dry. She, she already put one in there. Oh, okay. And back to dry. You should just take off the extras. And then what you want to do is it goes into your oil. So you want to get the cauliflower, you want to dip it in the wet. You want to coat it. You want to take it back to your wet mixture. Yeah, we And then you want to take it back to your dry mixture. Okay. So we are repeating this process. So we're going from wet to dry. We are then going back to wet. Back to wet. Okay. To dry and then dry. Back. What? You're doing it twice. Oh, never. I got that. My sister. Back to dry. I was about ready, but she was. Once you double coat it, you want to go ahead and drop it right in the oil to fry. Oh, they fry yeah. I told you. Do it Do it and you're double coating it. You want to give it a you want to give it a feel like it's kicking. So that's why we're double coating the cauliflower. So you want to go from wet 
to dry, to wet. How long did you do that? Brown. Brown. They don't turn brown like fried chicken. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Get out of here. You want to try fried chicken like fried chicken? Okay. It's looking good. I can try this at home. You ain't going to eat it. Let me see. I'm going to try it tonight. That tastes good. That's fine. That's fine. Of course, it's going to be Joby. He's going to know what it is. He's going to take a chicken nugget. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, put him in there. She just got it. She got a whole lot in her. Woo. Mm. Smells good, Morgan, doesn't it? Oh, my goodness. It do smell good. We're ready to eat it right now. I want to try all the pain too much. Yeah. Yeah, so are we? So what we should be doing right now is we should be taking our cauliflower. Dipping it into the wet, dipping it into the dry, taking it back to the wet and back to the dry. All right. Everybody quiet. Focus, <laughs> we focus. I'm finished. <laughs> you ain't cooking a lot, Dean, if you finish. Then the pan is fun. See in the band front, I got assistance. See, that's exactly. Assistance. <laughs> you think you're on your lip. Assistance. He is too funny. Y'all should have assistance. I got proper assistance. I know that's right. Okay. Yeah. 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 Y
house. Yep, and we opened it, and we've been rolling ever since. Oh, yeah, yeah. He would come home when we were dating and courting. He would come home from work. I'm now removing my cauliflower, y'all. Okay. And when he come home from work, I have something to cook, and he wouldn't believe that I cooked it. He said, you're too young to know how to cook like this. <laughs> I said, no, no. I like to eat. <laughs> so... Let me turn this off. So yeah, so I just started cooking and he was like, he was serious about it. So we drove by the Mad Crab when they were closing. And when I drove by there, um, I talked to the owner and she said, oh yeah, you, I'm selling it for $50,000. And so I called her landlord and found out that she was leaving anyway. So instead of buying a restaurant that had failed, I talked to the landlord, which was Billy Baco. And um, he gave me an opportunity and a chance. And that's how Bisco got started. That's awesome. That's awesome. And I'm that's here. Awesome. That's awesome. And I'm here, guys. So, here to stay. Here to stay. Here to stay. Right. So to right. die. Everybody cauliflower fried up? Yes, yeah, beautiful. Uh, I, I, mean, I still got some more to cook, but I know okay. I got some more, too. I'm not getting that. They ain't got that quite yet. They're beautiful. They're beautiful. All right, but y'all, but y'all cauliflower is frying up, and y'all taking it out, right? Right. Yes. It's okay. fine. <laughs> so with fried cauliflower, this has a great flavor by itself. Mm -hmm. However, like I said, mm -hmm. I like things really spicy. That's just my palate. Yeah. But one important thing, one important thing for me. Um, because I love food so much, mm. it is imperative that when I am presented with food, that it is plated deep. That makes me want to eat it even more. Mm -hmm. So, how I plate my cauliflower is, oh, okay. oh, you put that. a little bit of spring mix down, oh, and most people, will even, most people will eat the spring mix. No, I'm all right. Okay, and then... I plate it like this. Oh, that's the presentation is everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then I take some fresh chopped parsley. And sprinkle the top on it. And put it on top. How are you doing? Now it's vegan. But because I have the issue and I like cheese. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is where the Parmesan come in at. Yeah. This is just because now it's vegan now. It is now vegan. I am now killing the whole vegan thing. And I'm oh, so, so she's breaking that Parmesan cheese over top oh. of it. Well, so I'm this, putting some shaved Parmesan cheese on it. That's right here. That's what you need. Now you can fry up a ton of this and put it on a platter. You can sprinkle it with Parmesan cheese. And then you can um and also top it with some fresh chopped parsley. <laughs> And these can be your cauliflower bites for your Super Bowl party. Okay. I like to pair mine with a sweet chili dipping sauce. You get it right at the grocery store. I don't, I don't make it. They can grab it out of my fridge. Take the top off to the bottom. Yep, there you go. I lost the lid. Hold on, but she took the. I lost the lid, so I had to make more because I ain't throwing away my sweet chili sauce. I don't blame you. I did that yesterday with orange juice. Okay, so this is sweet chili sauce. Right? I get it in the Asian section and I pair my cauliflower with that. Mm -hmm. And you have fried cauliflower. And it's plated and it looks yummy oh. and I want to eat it. So. Oh, mine looks beautiful. Ellen got an assistant. I can calm down now. I'm ready. Can I borrow your assistant? Yeah, just. <laughs> So, this selling. is the plated one for my daughter. My assistant can't even eat this because oh. she is gluten free. She's gluten intolerant, so she can't eat it because of the flour. Mm. So, she'll eat wings, but I'm going to try this real quick just to see if it's. <laughs> oh my God. So, mm. so I'm, I'm addicted to this. It's really good. Nice amount of spice to it. Nice crunch. I'm telling you guys, this mm -hmm. is a key. 
Mm. I can't wait to taste it. That fried cauliflower, I can't wait to taste it either. And I don't eat, I don't even eat that stuff like that. You know, I just, you know, I just eat everything, you know. You know, spicy fried cauliflower food, I don't eat vegan thing. style. I'm dry, okay. If there's food on cheese, 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 taste it, you get away. Okay? I'm going to pair it with the sweet chili sauce. Right. right. Okay. That's beautiful. Yeah. Okay. So how do we do it? Oh, shit. I, 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 I just check them, Baker. Oh, you just checked them. Oh, Sue just checked them. Am yeah, I still cooking? Did you check them, Walter? Yeah, I checked. Who? My sister's checked them. She always told <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we finished with this? Mm -hmm. Let's try. Right. I love you, Morgan. So we didn't make enough mixture. Mm -hmm. oh, <laughs> So funny. The bloopers of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So has anybody actually tried their cauliflower yet? No, actually, I have limited taste. Juice. I'm still cooking. Oh, y'all still cooking, y'all? Okay, keep cooking. I got one more batch after this. I won't put the on cheese on. Okay. Mm -hmm. I like it. Well, oh, yeah. It's good. Wow, you like it? It's good. good. You like it? It really is. It actually is good. <laughs> what? Oh, what? Are you kidding me? It's actually good. It's actually what? <laughs> oh. I think you need to give up chicken. I think you just need to give it up. Yes, you did that. And I don't eat cauliflower. Yeah. But this is any good. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's like it tastes like chicken. That crunch ain't gonna be played with. Hey, crunch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is good. Yes, guys. We did it. We did it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, we all did it. Gee. We just we just fried cauliflower. <laughs> so when your kids say they don't want to eat vegetables, right? Fry up some cauliflower. Cauliflower, there you go. Yeah. It's good in move. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I blew up my microwave with um butter. So <laughs> my, my my look, my catering manager Morgan is helping me. But you guys see her in the background cleaning up the microwave just because I blew up the water. But um, just hit one. So yeah, a little bowl over there. All right. So remember I told y'all earlier I was making butter. Yes. Butter is made. So what I do. Can you give me the butter out of the fridge that's uh, from the top shelf? Oh, wow. It's, um, it's in a, it's in a oh, butter wait. in a parchment paper. Take me out a piece of parchment paper. See, here's my butter that I made, um, I don't know, last week. So it's my roll of butter for our home. It's probably more than a half a cup. It's probably a full cup. Mm -hmm. So when you do this in your KitchenAid or your mixer or your sunbeam, all of them work the same. Oh yeah. Those Once you mix it, it is going to separate the milk. So at the bottom of this bowl, there's some milk down in there. Okay. I don't need the milk for portion. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the butter out. And this is a Himalayan sea salt butter. Let me tell you another trick that I do when I make butter. Really? Yeah, I so flavor good. the butter with whatever I want. So yeah. if I want a garlic salt butter, then that's what I put in my heavy whipping cream in my mix. Yeah. You can put Italian herbs in there. You can put spices. I've got some spices that are coming out on Southern Spice Rack that are amazing. And you can make all different types of flavored butter. There you are, Morgan. So I put it on a parchment paper and it just looks like a big old clump of this, right? And so what I do is I pull it and I roll it. 
So when I have parties and I want to be fancy, I'll make specialty butters. And they'll be like, oh my God, this butter spread was amazing. What was that? I'm like, oh, I make it. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's a custom butter that I make. Oh, you don't make custom butter? Yeah, all that. Heavy whipping cream seasonings right in your mixer. Get the stir in 30 minutes, you got butter. And you guys, Tipsy to be on food. Look, you know how you go to the grocery store and you see that Amish butter that's like $6, $7 for a roll? Mm -hmm. That's it right there. That's it. Right there. Hey. And you get flavor. That goes right in the fridge. All right, I told y'all I'm a different type of cooking show. I clean as I go. I know that's all right. So let me just do a quick wipe down so we can get ready to Take make the green sauce. Be on Food Network. Now, if your wings are white, because you know I'm, this is this is just preference for me. If your wings have not darkened but they are done, put the oven on broil for about six, five or six minutes to brown them up. Casey, hey, so what you eating? My cauliflower. What it tastes like? <laughs> it tastes good. cauliflower, girl. Yeah, yes, I am. Yeah. I'm like, thank mm. Y'all taste that, y'all taste that cauliflower. Yeah, this yeah, tastes good. Good. It's 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 good. Yeah, we ready. We gotta get ready to make this Make sure up. we flip those wings. Make sure we flip those wings. Get the wings flip. Next question. Oh, next question. Who ate chitlins? Me. During slavery, who oh, ate me. chitlins? Who ate chitlins during slavery? Only slaves. Not the ones in Or both. Only, oh, only slaves. Of, um, what you say? Oh, the, the owners? I say both. Who ate chitlin the during slavery? The, 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 the slaves. 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 The only. The slave owners. Oh, that right. right. Okay. The slave oh. owners. Slaves oh. only. Just the slaves. The slaves That's owners. The slave owners. The slaves owners. I say both. Just the Who slaves. Who said both? Who said both? Just the slaves. Just the slaves. She said it because I gave her the answer. <laughs> Who said both? Tara. 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 You are right. Yay! She got the answer. She got the answer from me. Tried it. <laughs> Tara, you win today. You win a twelve-piece mm. non-breakable dish set. Look at God. Mm -hmm. And it is so colorful and it is so pretty. And I use it at my house out on my deck. And I love this dish set. Yeah. Oh, you don't want that, Tom. <laughs> she don't want that. What is it? Monster said, said I don't want it because he wants it. That dish set is hot. Yeah, it goes to Tara. Yeah. You know, little history on this with the chitlins, right? So I see you. I see Tom tomorrow. I'm going to get that dish set. They out there cooking chitlins. And once they got done, once the chitlins got done, the owners smelt the chitlins being cooked and said, "What is that?" And ordered them, ordered a slave to bring them the prepared dish because yeah. they mm -hmm. saw how. It, <coughs> excuse me. Then you want the chitlins to sit when they would eat these chitlins. And once the slave yeah. owner tried it. They made it a part of their regular cuisine. So it has been, people often thought that only slaves ate chitlins and livers and hog moths. The, the owners of the slaves ate the, some of the same food and had the slaves prepared for them because they saw how good the food looked and how they, the slaves enjoyed eating it. So they wanted to know, what were you eating? What are you eating? And they brought it to you. And now, and then it's went from the slave dinner table to the to the master's dinner table. So um, they ate the same thing that the slaves ate quite often. 
Now Chitlins, of course, is a delicacy all around the world. People absolutely love them. Um, when I launched them this year, and uh, the line was from my restaurant to Papa John's 20 minutes before I opened because I wouldn't let anybody pre-buy them. I didn't expect that. I sold out in like 30 minutes. Wow. Um, so Chitlins is still a very popular thing. People love Chitlins. It's just a lot of work that goes into it. Yeah. Yeah. It is, it is. Okay. You can add in. So, <laughs> one more question, one more question. Who hasn't won a prize? If you won a prize, you can't answer. Oh, what? that's not fair, Tish. If you won a prize, we're going back to elementary school. If you Mr. already Mr. got something about the goodie box, you can't win this. Yeah. All right, well, here's the question. Mr. Ali won too. <laughs> already won. So soul food, we know, is something, and I think I gave y'all the answer to this one too. This should be easy. Good. No, I'm going to change up the question. <laughs> what is the tradition in the Black family that um, held the family together and that we did weekly? We, what was the one tradition we did weekly that held the family together? Sunday dinner. We ate dinner. Who, who Sunday, Sunday dinner? dinner. Sunday, Sunday dinner. Oh, Stacy. Stacy, you got it. Girl, what? What went on at Sunday dinner? Mm. Go down. Sunday dinner. Food. Family what? time, laughing, joking. God, Sometimes you get all the soup at Sunday dinner. Yep. Yes, sir. You get all the 411. Oh, all the good. And they think the kids don't be listening and we be listening. <laughs> yes, sir. They have the kids I'm going to that lady house again. I'm telling you, you know, it, Sunday dinner was everything. Sunday dinner was everything. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Sunday yeah. dinner was everything. Yeah. Let me tell you. So I talked yeah. about that on the recording I did yesterday for uh, in, um, the stage door. And the one thing I said, a few, few of the benefits that I said about Sunday dinner was, it was a bonding and strengthening of relationships within the family. Yes. You yep. learn respect and manners and how to behave in the house and outside the house. The house. Right. We prayed together. We um, learned Bible verses. Mm -hmm. um, right. We found out who got a job, who lost their job, who having a baby. People <laughs> exaggerated stories from 30 years ago. And the most, the most fun part was the family gossip. But there was never any lingering resentment, you know? It's like all week long, you know that your two uncles are arguing all week. Yeah. I mean, they would speak. And then come hit Sunday, you would think you'd never have problems. So Sunday was like that restart day where everybody loved on each other and they just started anew. And so it was, it's just really disheartening to see that it doesn't happen like that today. I know our lives do not allow us to do the Sunday dinner like we used to. But you guys, that Sunday dinner did so much for families. Yeah. Yeah. So much. Yeah. And it makes me wonder if we still did, would there be more healing? Yeah. There was a lot of healing around soul food. I don't care. I don't care who I got in an argument with. I'm coming to get that piece of I'm showing up. Right. I'm showing up. It's peach cobbler. It's so we true. We family, I forgive you. The grandma so made the peach cobbler. Oh. It's so true. It's so, so true. Even as kids, yeah. we fought. But on Sunday, it is so everything true. was washed away. Everything was washed away. So your prize, you won. You won a two piece cleaver knife set. They nice, nice. I love my cleaver set. Stacey, so don't you say you don't need that. Huh? Because yeah. you know, I'm always um, throwing out knives and warnings and, you know. You can. You can. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. That's Thank nice. You. That's nice. They're real nice, Stacy. That's nice. It's a real, it yeah, it's a I'll be by my house. lethal weapon. Yeah, I'll be by the house to pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> Now, so all the prizes will be at the bistro, and you know what you want. So just, you know, come in and say, I want a nice set, I want a dish set, and they'll have the prizes there for you this evening. 
Okay. But, yeah, I really miss, if I could bring one tradition back uh, in the African-American culture, it would be dinner. I yeah. think that um, a lot of a lot of children and yeah. a lot of families and mm -hmm. families so much for the soul. Yeah, I miss, the I miss family oh reunions. That's, that's yeah, what family reunions too. That's what yeah. I miss. And they, but you know what? They did family reunions and they still have Sunday dinner. Yeah, Sunday so the dinner. family right. actually like being together. Yeah, you're right. You're I'm gonna right. show y'all something. I'm gonna show y'all something. Can y'all see this? Yes. Let me see. See that? And then four this years old. Picture, this is a picture of my great grandmother at 104 years old. And every year in September, we would always get together as a family and do our family reunions. So this is yeah. my maternal great grandma. Sure, they and, my, and my maternal grandmother is still living, and she's Amen. 91. Uh -huh. And I have a great aunt that's still living that's 94. So we used to always gather and make those homemade pies. And Man. We love peaches. She had a peach orchard. And just, just we still do a lot of the old traditions. So that just reminded me of cooking. Ooh. Well, that is truly a blessing. And I'll tell you this. Um, I keep it on my recipe. They're in the brain. Those recipes are in the brain. So you got to watch and make yeah. It's in the brain. Oh, yeah. People ask me, Fish, how do you make your cornbread dressing? I said, I'm so sorry, baby. You just don't have to watch me. <laughs> I, I just, I season it and taste it and taste it and season it, and then it's right. They call it mother's wit. There was a lot of mother's wit when it came to soul food. And it was nice because on Sunday, the, the ones that were learning how to cook were the sous chef who did the prepping. Mm -hmm. And then the ones that knew how to cook would be in the kitchen. Oh, and eventually you would graduate and get a dish. Huh. My dish was peach cobbler. I thought I'd rock. My grandmama said, go ahead and roll out that dough to make the peach cobbler. I was so excited. So I got the peach cobbler now. <laughs> That's all right. I cooking class with that. That's all right. Oh, is that cup? Mm -hmm. okay. So we're going to now make our sauce for our wings. Now, I cheated. So I started some wings before we got started. I still have my wings that are cooking on the same time you guys put yours in. But I have some wings that um, I started cooking before, just in case we got uh, a little behind. I wanted to make sure that we were able to do everything. So. Um, when your wings are ready, they'll look, they'll almost look like the oven fried. Okay? They'll almost look like you oven fried. They'll be nice and brown. Okay? So that's the way your wings will look. It's pretty. We're going to make our sauce. So, for your garlic parmesan, wings, you need to make a garlic parmesan sauce. So you want to take um, a half a cup of butter melted and you want the butter to cool a little bit. You don't want the, but the butter scorching hot. And you want to put that into your bowl. Okay. Eight cloves of garlic minced. Okay. Did you put it in? So that's your... Somebody got the little fries, the little garlic roller. You can mince garlic so easy. You want to put your eight cloves mint. You want to put a half a cup of Parmesan cheese. Right there, the garlic is going into half a cup. Uh -huh. Half a cup of Parmesan cheese in there. Okay. And then you want to put two tablespoons of fresh parsley. Okay. Then what you do, when your wings are ready, your wings fry, depending on the size of your wings, your wings may not be ready just yet. They're not. Yep. But when they are, you want to take your wings and you want to drop them into 
your mixture. Uh -huh. Okay. Did somebody fall? Yes. You already add the Parmesan cheese to the mixture? Coco Lane. Yeah. So in your mixture, you do okay. one half cup of melted butter. You want to do eight cloves of minced garlic, which will probably give you about three tablespoons. You want to use two tablespoons of fresh parsley and a half a cup of Parmesan cheese shredded. Okay, like I told you guys on Amazon, these are my cheap bowls, so I don't have to be stirring and trying to coat it. And I can just shake that. Yeah, then I just I shake everything in my bowl. Because I didn't do the rest of the mixture, so I'm just watching. Oh, it's easy. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. Oh, my, my, my. Stay sane, stay sane. They dip their jet. No, no. All right. <laughs> Hold on, let me grab some. Miss Tish, can you show yours again, please? Yes. So, let's see. This is pre-plating. Wow. Wow. Hey. My dog. Ooh. Yes. Tay, what you say? Tay, what you say? <laughs> they said, ooh. Ooh. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. So, all right, I just shook one of the bones. Like I told you, for me, it's just a preference. I like to play things and I like to look pretty. supposed to be watching but I'm, I missed a few things. That's okay. I'm going to go back over it. So. That away, that away, and that away. Yep. All right. So. Fresh Parmesan wings. Okay. Nice. Mm -hmm. nummy, nummy, nummy. So. Um, once your wings are done cooking 
in a bowl, you want to add a half cup of butter melted and cool at room temperature, eight cloves, cloves of mixed garlic, which is about three tablespoons. You want two tablespoons of fresh parsley chopped. And then you want a half cup of Parmesan shredded cheese. You want to put it all in the bowl. You want to add your wings to the bowl. Mm -hmm. And when you add your wings to the bowl, you want to shake, 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 shake. Shake three times. Shake to shake it right. And then once you shake it and get it all nice and coated, then you want to go ahead and top it with some fresh shaved Parmesan cheese and parsley. And there you have some game day fun meal. Okay. So, because it's my favorite, <laughs> you are not eating. Oh, she's eating garlic parmesan. I'm like, you cannot eat the cauliflower because it's not gluten free. How are the wings? They're really good. They're really good. Okay. <laughs> Taste test, y'all. I told y'all these are my favorite. I got to try them. Can I get a napkin too? Thank you. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I'm making these tomorrow for game day. Mm. Oh my God. Mm hmm. The garlic is like powering. Mm. And I like the flats. Does anybody have a preference on your wings? Flat. Me too. Mm. 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 Well, there it is. Garlic Parmesan wings and fried cauliflower for game day. Mm. This is really good. I'm gonna have to call my husband now and tell him he can come and eat. <laughs> <laughs> he said, What are you cooking? I said, Fried cauliflower. He said, I'll pass. I said, But I'm making garlic parmesan wings. He's like, I'll be down. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's how we're cooking at my house for game day, y'all. Are you doing the thing over there? I'm trying. So, do you guys have any questions for me? None other than I have had a ball today. None <laughs> other than I have had a ball in my kitchen. When Listen. you get Oh my God, this stuff is good. I am starting my own um, cooking show. So I'll be going live on Tuesdays and oh, I'll wow. be cooking different things. And um, I think I'm a little different in the sense that um, I don't know if it's the right way, if it's the culinary way, but it's my way. Okay. And so I'll be doing a lot of um, a lot of real fun recipes. I think this upcoming um, Tuesday we're doing bang bang shrimp. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. oh yeah. So you can see how easy bang bang shrimp is. Oh. Everybody be alive. That recipe is also on SouthernSpiceRack.com. Tuesday at what time? I'll be I'll be doing YouTube shows under Orleans Bistro, um, and it is uh, Bang Bang Shrimp. What time? So on you Tuesday. Go to my YouTube channel, and you'll be able to watch the videos, or you'll be able to um, go to the website Southern Spice Rack, and the videos will be linked there as well. What time, Tish? Tuesdays we're gonna go live at noon. Every at noon. Tuesday. Okay, every Tuesday at noon. So okay. We're gonna do one dish. Okay. I we're doing our first one this upcoming Tuesday, so we're excited. Oh, I, oh I'm gonna put it out there for you. you I'm gonna put the business out there for you. <laughs> eat the chicken wing. It must be good. Yeah. So, um, Miss Tish, is there somewhere we can get the ingredient list um, prior to? Or yes, you go to Southern Spice Rack. Dot com. Uh huh. Okay. Um, and you'll be able to go to my website and link to the Southern Spice Rack as well. My web person didn't do it in time. She'll do it for me on Monday. Okay. But um, yeah, you'll be able to go right there. You go under appetizers and all the recipes will be there with the instructions. And you guys can either cook with me, cook before me, or cook after me. Okay. Because you'll have the recipe. That's awesome. Uh, it'll just be, uh, and this month I'm just going to be doing all type of fun facts about Black History Month, and I'll theme out something every time I do it on Tuesday. That's awesome. Uh -uh. Yeah. Is it good, Maddie? Yeah, right. Y'all see this right here? 
Man, they came up for air yet. No, this is their second one already. No. <laughs> is she eating the cauliflower? She's eating the chicken right now. Oh, she eating the chicken. <laughs> eating the cauliflower. I love it. We got before. We got a full piece of cauliflower left after that be cauliflower. <laughs> I know, right? Oh, there's this all is... kind of cool ways that, that you can cook vegetables. And I'm, I'm so excited about the cooking show that I'm starting. And we're, we're excited. Gonna we're going to we're gonna make sure we support. So We're going to support. We definitely yes, want to support. That's awesome. We so definitely want to support. And so the chicken wings that I do at the restaurant, oh. right now we just got approved our custom blend for it. So I will be selling, um, it's called, what did, what did we say it was? Um, Kitchen Magic. So Kitchen Magic is my, um, is my seafood, is my seasoning that I use on chicken, pork chops. Um, I put it on, you can put it on anything. It's just, mm -hmm. it's like an all purpose everything. And that's going to be on your thing. I, that's what I use at Orleans Bistro for my, all my fried chicken, all my pork chops. Is that what it's called again? Oh. It is the um, it's our southern spice rack kitchen. Spice rack. It's on the spice rack, okay. Right, it will right it, it will be up this upcoming week or it'll be up on there for pre-order. Oh, okay. We got our, they just did the blend right. We sent it back three times. They finally got it right. I'm ready to eat all these wings. That's awesome. Master. Well, Tish, we really appreciate you. I never turned I appreciate you guys too. And um, if you guys ever do anything like this again, I would love to do this again. This is so much fun. Of course. Of course. Yeah, so thank you guys for letting me come into each one of y'all kitchens with you guys and do a little cooking. Yes, Tish, for Easter, we might have that a problem happen. We might have to do another one. You might have to show us to do that piece of cobbler. Praise God. And, and, oh. oh, my God. <laughs> Baby, that man. It'll make you want to drive to California and slap somebody. What? The peach cobbler? You're going to have to show us how to pick that key. Yes, Lord. Oh, I love peach cobbler. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes. I will teach you guys how to make it, and it is so simple. Well, and so, so right, yeah, I well, believe we're gonna it. You're going to have to put that, we have to line that one so up for Easter. Yes, yeah, so we can do, um, well, we could do peach cobbler. We could also do another uh, staple is banana pudding. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh! So we'll do a peach cobbler and a banana pudding challenge. Mm. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You felt it. Oh! Oh! <laughs> well, we don't want to hold everyone else up. Um, okay. Thank you, Tish. We appreciate you. Yay! Me, I appreciate each and every one of you, and I we love you, you, Tish. We love you, Tish. We love you, Tish. All right, bye bye, everybody. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.